Shalom to the Lord's elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, it's another video. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Kodash for giving us this knowledge, this truth, which will be the stability of our times. Okay, so I'm going to react to this video here uh, put up by Only the Elect. This is the group called Sakari. And that group is led by um, Chief Priest Alazar. Now, the the uh, leader of the group Sakari came up underneath us, GMS, but he broke off and formed his own thing. And in my honest opinion, it's just another... Now, there may be elect members among them, maybe, but it's just another uh, reprobate group. Okay, as you see... They, you see them here with hats on their head. That's in violation of scripture. Okay. There's a, a, a lot of things that they teach that is true. Uh, after all, they came up underneath us, GMS. But there's also equally a lot of things that they do that is not according to scripture. One of them being wearing those hats on their head when they're out there teaching the scriptures. Um, also, um, what you're about to hear, uh, the speaker, the statement, a statement that he makes about, uh, you know, living a sinless life, which is impossible in this body. To begin with, we're in we're in the likeness of sinful flesh. OK. Uh, the scriptures is very clear that sin dwelleth within our bodies, and that's why we have to be changed. If it was possible to live a sinless life then you wouldn't need Yahweh You wouldn't need Yahweh to come and liberate you from sins. All right? Also, um, uh, if it were possible to lead a, sin a sinless life in, in this body, then you, you, you won't need a change. Why would you need a change? One of the reasons why we're going to be changed, as it is written in 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter is because we're in a body of sin. Is because we're in a corruptible body. As a matter of fact, let me get that right quick. What do you think it means by a corruptible body? That means this is a body that's conducive to sinning. Okay? The Apostle Paul even broke it down when he said, That which I don't want to do, that do I, meaning sin. Okay? And all of us are subject to sin. And that's why all of us need what we need a savior. And the only the only ones the savior is coming for is the elect of the nation of Israel. I want first Corinthians, not second. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. I'm just going to go right to the point. <clears throat> it is right here. The 53rd verse for this corruptible must put on incorruption. What does incorruption mean? This is where you don't sin. This is where it's impossible for you to sin. But right now we're in the we're in this corruptible. These bodies are corrupt to begin with. Why? Because they constantly sin. What is sin? Transgression of the law. The flesh that we in seeks constantly to keep breaking the heavenly Father's laws, statutes, and commandments. Now there's a scripture where it says a foolish thought with the heavenly Father's sin. Can these guys stop themselves from having foolish thoughts so it's clear that these dudes are, are novices lifted up with pride and they don't know what the hell they're talking about first corinthians 15 and 53 for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality right and guess what when you to the point where you can't sin that makes you an immortal you become an immortal are we immortals yet the answer is no a resounding no so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, who's going to do that? Yahweh Shai is going to do that for us. He's going to change our bodies when he comes back. Not only are we going to be delivered from certain destruction, the, the hopeful elect, and I, and I say hopeful, meaning I hope I'm part of that group, our bodies are going to be changed as well. You're going to be delivered from that certain destruction, and your bodies are going to be changed, meaning you won't be able to sin. Even if you wanted to, you won't be able to sin. It'll be impossible to sin. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, 
Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Another point to be made. If you don't sin, then you can't die. All right. Uh, death is a result of what? Sin. Okay. The, the uh, Apostle Paul was very clear on this. And said, when you sin, sin bringeth forth what? Sin bringeth forth death. Let me see if I can find that scripture. Sin bringeth. It might have been James who said it. Either James or the Apostle Paul. Uh, yeah, it was James. James who said it. I always get those two mixed up. James 1 and 15. So these guys talking about they, they don't sin. They, you could live, live a sinless life. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Let's read what James said. This is just always the thing with these novices, boy, I tell you. James 1 and 15. Well, let me start at 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lusts have conceived, I guess they can stop themselves from lusting, right? These guys here. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So if that's the case, if they don't sin, then it, they can stop themselves from dying. One of the reasons we're not going to die anymore, we're going to be immortals, is because we won't sin. And that's underneath the new covenant. When Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to put us under that, underneath that new covenant. So without further ado, let's get into it. Thank you. So all I'm saying is when you say, oh, you're saying, everybody's sinner. Listen, that is, po that is possible, that is possible, that is possible to live a sinless life. Well, you're not saved by your Yeah, the, uh, the woman said everybody's a sinner. Well, that's true. Romans 6 and 23. We do sins, um, we commit sins, and uh, we don't even, we commit sins and we don't even know it, man. Okay, like I said, a foolish thought. Well, like the scripture says, a foolish thought with the Heavenly Father is sin. Well, I'll get that scripture next for you. Romans 6 and 23, let's read that. Oh, look at that, look at that. Romans 6 and 20. So I guess the Apostle Paul was lying when he said this. For when ye were servants, when ye were the servants of sin, ye were f free from righteousness. All right? And even now we're still the servants of sin. Because we're in the sinful flesh. Uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift now, nah, that's not what I want. All have sinned. Let, let's get that. All have sinned. All have sinned. All have sinned. Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Heavenly Father. Okay? All have sinned. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of the, of the Heavenly Father's glorious standard. Yeah. And the reason why we fall short of the, heavy, the Heavenly Father's glorious standard is because we sin. Okay? Foolish thought. Let's get that. Foolish thought. Okay, that might be in the Apocrypha. Uh, Okay, it's actually Proverbs 24 and 9. I don't know why I didn't, well, Blue Letter Bible, say no more. You got to be super precise with the Blue Letter Bible. Proverbs 24 and 9, let's read that. Proverbs 24 and 9. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. So can these guys here, can they stop themselves from having thoughts of foolishness? Yeah, okay. Anyway, let's move on. No, you're not saved by your own. You're not saved by your own. 
same thing, man. Right. Okay, so, like, these things are okay. I, I, is that wrong for what I said? Thank you. So all I'm saying is what you say. Oh, you're saying everybody's sinners. Listen, that is po that is possible. That is possible. That is possible to live a sinless life. All right, hey, shalom, shalom. Not when you're in these bodies, it's not possible. When you're in these bodies, that's why we have to be changed. So he ears not the guys uh, speaking. He ears not knowing the scriptures. First and foremost, call her Lord Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah Bahasham or Kakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone who teach you well, peace and infinite salutations to the elect that are scattered abroad doing this work in truth and sincerity, teaching the names of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh and prophesying against Mount Seir. I'm the brother Abal Gabar from the Camp Company of Prophets here in Tampa, Florida, coming at you with a quick lesson. Okay, Abal Gabar. He's the one that put up this video. This is his channel here, only the elect. Oh, well, then it's edifying to the whole fool. Elect. All right, and I was watching this video, okay, uh, from Sakari San Diego, a uh, clamorous Christian woman versus black Hebrew Israelite debate, the love of Jesus, which I don't know why you would label yourself as a black Hebrew Israelite. When exactly. Why would you call yourself a black Hebrew Israelite? Those guys are agents, man. First of all, we know we are not black. And we also know that Esau uses this terminology to demonize us. As a matter of fact, that term black Hebrew Israelite, that's in Project Project Megiddo. Okay, so that's a that's a uh that's a term of the feds. The the uh, you know, the federal police, that's a term that they use, black Hebrew Israelite. Okay, that uh, we're one of those groups that are deemed terrorists. Again, you can uh, read about that in um, Project Megiddo, black Hebrew Israelite. Project, I believe Apostle Todd did a video on that, Megiddo, Project Megiddo, black Black Hebrew Israelite. See that? Contemporary violent extreme extremism and the Black Hebrew Israelite movement. Project Megiddo is from Wikipedia. Look at that. Look at that. Project Megiddo was a report researched and written by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, under Director Louis Free. Released on October 20, 1999, the report named followers of white supremacy, Christian identity, and the American militia movement, black Hebrew Israelites, and ap ap apocalyptic cults. Apocalyptic cults. Okay. As potential terrorists who might become violent in reaction to the new millennium, or in this case, the new world order. So why would you call yourself black Hebrew Israelites? <laughs> this guy, you got guys that are not, either they, look, it's either or, either they totally sold out or they're just not too bright, okay? You know what the Lord said about his people? His people are Sardish children. Sardish means stupid. But I digress from, from that point, okay? Furthermore, right. Furthermore, not every Israelite looks like a so-called black person. You're going to have Israelites that look like so-called white people. So how about a so-called white Hebrew Israelite? <laughs> black Hebrew Israelites. So-called white Hebrew Israelites. You're gonna, the truth is you're going to have Hebrew Israelites looking like every nation where they were scattered. That's just the truth. Because this, the nation of Israel was scattered among all nations. And I just saw the title of this, and I'm just like, wow. But what I want to touch on is what he said, 
Okay, and I believe uh, this is the captain. Uh, I believe that he says Captain Taz is his name. Okay, he's been with Sakari for quite a while. But as you heard what he said, he said it's possible to live a sinless life. Let me let's play it back to get the, exactly what he said. Everybody, sinner. Listen, that is po- that is possible. That is possible. That is possible to live a sinless life. See, and right there. It goes to sh- Again, not in these bodies. It's not possible. Okay, this is why the Apostle Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Okay? Micah, Micah 7 and 9, I, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. We, we continually sin against the Heavenly Father every day. Even a foolish thought is sin with the Heavenly Father. Show you that. Sakari so does not understand the scriptures. Okay, starting with their leader Alizar on down. Let me open up with this scripture real quick. Okay, because we, when the Lord comes back, He's going to forgive us of our sins. Okay, mm-hmm. and we are supposed to rehearse the righteous acts, but we are in, um sinful flesh okay the flesh is contrary to the spirit right okay so we repent okay but see sakari really thinks that they don't sin yeah like the brother said let's hear that again and we're gonna get a scripture let's hear that again we when the lord comes back he's going to forgive us of our sins okay and we are supposed to rehearse the righteous acts, but we are in um, sinful flesh, okay? The flesh is contrary to the spirit, okay? So we repent, okay? We are in sinful flesh. The, fl- the flesh is contrary to the spirit. Another law. I'll show you what the Apostle Paul said. This is the book of Romans 7 and 23. I'll start at 22. For I delight in the law of the Heavenly Father after the inward man. And that's those of us that delight to be right. We want to do right by Yahweh Barashim Yahushai. We want to do, we want to be as perfect as possible in the sight of Yahweh Barashim Yahushai. Right? We delight we delight in the law of the heavenly father after the inward man that's the spirit but i see another law in my members and that's true for us as well it was true for the apostle paul it's true for us i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members so you you tell me that what i just read they don't apply to these guys too these guys are delusional. All right, delusions. Let's read that in the NLT. But there is another power within me that is that is at that is at war with my mind. Right. There's this constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Still within me. I close the book right there. But see, Sakari really thinks that they don't sin. Okay, so and yeah, because they're unlearned, they're delusional, and uh, you know, beginning with their leader, their leader is not a true teacher of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Their leader is really a hireling. Okay, he's in it for the money. All right, and his understanding is very little. He he was a novice. He was a novice, lifted up with pride. And he's definitely in the condemnation of the devil. Let's listen some more. Their eyes, they keep all 613 commandments, okay, perfectly to the T. Which Which is impossible, which is totally impossible. The best we can do is rehearse the righteous acts. It's a rehearsal. But to keep it perfect, we can't do it. And furthermore, no one is justified by the law. All right? That's another point that should be made. 
even if you try to keep the law perfect in this flesh, which you can't do, it's impossible to do, you still wouldn't be justified. The Lord said all our righteousness is as filthy rags. So here these guys trying to come off on like they're so righteous, holier than thou. Well, the Lord said all our righteousness to him is as filthy rags. That's why we have to be changed. Uh, Romans 2 and 12, For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law, or without law. And as many as sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. It is right here, Romans 3 and 20, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And it's impossible for us to keep all the laws perfectly in this captivity, in this society. And furthermore, none of us is justified by the law. Let's go back to the video. Getting ready to wrap this up. We know, according to the scriptures, the only one that could do that was Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay, right. our Lord. That's right. Okay. Our Lord and Savior. All right. So let me grab this. This is, um, Matthew 22 and 29. Yahweh shall answered and said unto them, you do err because you know not the scriptures. Okay. You do err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of the most high. Okay, and Sakari time and time again continues to err concerning the scriptures. Okay, and um, I believe IUIC has the same stance that they don't sin. Okay, the Lord said He's coming back for the the sick. Those that are whole need not a physician. Okay, see, we know. Starting with our elder apostles, a great millstone on down to the like-minded brothers, that we need a physician. We are sick. We're in uh, a sinful flesh. Okay? We go off. All right? That's why we need Yahweh Shai to change us. Okay? Let me grab this real quick. Right. Exactly. That's the point. 1 John 1 and 8 to 10. I'm going to end it with that. This is a scripture to the Sakari individuals. First John one first John one and eight eight to ten. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. That's a cold cut to that group. Sakari. Okay, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. <laughs> if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Right. And that's the hour shy and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, not some unrighteousness, all of it. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So. There you go. That says it all about, you know, about this group. Scary. They better repent, man. The BS doctrine they're teaching. All right. But I, I don't think they're going to repent. I, they just, guys are, you know, you got some guys brought into this thing that are not too bright. They're just reprobates brought in to be made an example out of. Is what it is. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. On to the next one.